video and today I thought I would show you how I crochet these um, little hexagons. The pattern is called um, African Flower and I will link to the tutorial that I use to learn this stitch but um, since I'm making a lot of them I figured they'd make a good little relaxation video if you're like me and you get triggered by watching other people um, make hearts and crafts and so on. So um, I do a fair bit of crocheting, but I'm not a crochet expert. This um, video is being done for relaxation purposes, not necessarily to give the pattern. Um, although if you aren't a crocheter, you may like this pattern. So I am using these to make a baby blanket. Um, so I will have multiple of these hexagons and they measure um, six inches in diameter. And as you can see, they are marked with four colors um, and there's five rounds. So this is a pattern that is worked in the round. Um, you have the blue, the pink makes up two rounds, which I'll show you. Then you have the purple and the white. So to do this, I will show you the colors that I'm using. Um, you do not have to use these exact colors, but I use Karen Simply Soft. And it's just... Um, it is a 100% acrylic yarn, which means that it's machine washable and dryable really easily. And it is a worsted weight yarn, which means it's a number four. And if you're not a crocheter, all you need to know is that there are different um, like widths of yarn. And so this is like a number four width. Um, and so that's good for crafters to know in terms of how big their projects are going to turn out. So this one, the pink, is in the color strawberry. The purple is in the color orchid. The blue is in the color soft blue. And then I've lost the label for the white, but it is their true white. They also have an off-white color but this is the true white. So again, we're gonna start with this um, center bit here. So I'm using the blue in this. And you start by making a slip knot, putting your hook through, and I'm using a H8 five millimeter hook. So the first thing you're going to do is chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to turn and we're going to look at the side and we're going to slip stitch it very first stitch. So we stick it in and we pull a loop through both. I've never um, done an instructional video before, so I'm trying to remember to show you how I do things. So for this little bit here, this is the tail end. And this is what we call our working yarn. So you kind of wrap the tail end around so that as you work, you kind of tuck it in with it. So I have it kind of wrapped around here. And we're gonna start by chaining another three. So grab the yarn, pull through, two, three. And this is going to, um, count as one double crochet 
and then you're going to yarn over, go through both the loop and around your little tail bit of yarn. Pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. That is um, one chain three and a double crochet. So what we're going to do now is chain one and do another double crochet. Pull through, pull through, yarn over, go through, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And what you'll get as you keep going, chain one, two more double crochet. start to get is the little spokes. So you have the little gaps there. And that's where the pink will work into, into those little gaps. And as you can see, I've kind of caught my loose yarn on the back side. So we have six. Chained one, seven, eight, chain one, nine, ten, chain one, and the last set is eleven. And twelve. Oops, I apologize. So there we go. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We're going to chain one one last time and we're going to find the top of this stitch. Now, a lot of people work into the third chain from the bottom. I actually like working into the fourth, which is the top of that double crochet, because when you pull through, it just gives a little bit of a tighter look. Otherwise, these two can splay out, and um, that just in the finished product, I don't like the way it looks. So I just go up a chain to um, give it the look. So now what we're going to do, because this is the end of this round, and we're about to start the pink round, um, I'm going to do one more yarn over and pull through, because you see the loop is on this side, and the working yarn is over here. So you bring those together. I like to tie it. And then with your little loop, you get your scissors. And This time I also go and look back on the back side and find this little tail. Trim it off. Because I like to work as I go so that at the end I don't have so many things to weave through and um, tails to tuck. <laughs> so when we tie on the pink round, a couple things to note is you're going to want to attach it in one of these. I'm going to move these. To one of these um, chain one spaces, as they're called. And then we're also going to want to put it on in a place where we can catch this yarn. And we want to make sure we're putting it on the right side, which you can tell because on the back side it has much more of a um, has much more of a um, like loopy look. I don't know how else to describe it. It looks like it actually is a bunch of loops, whereas on this side it looks a little bit twistier. Like it looks like there are a bunch of twists. 
so I can tuck my blue yarn out of the way. And burn out my pink. Now, um, people tie on their yarn different ways. I like to make another slip knot. And then, oops. So I'll have the loop on this side, pull through my working yarn, pull through again. And that way everything's securely on. Um, I just like to do it that way. So what we're going to do now is chain three. And then we're going to chain two more. So that's five total. And then we're going to do two double crochet um, in that same chain one space. Careful about splitting my yarn. So what that does is it creates a fake double crochet and then a little bit of a chain space. Then you chain one and you go across to the next chain space. Two double crochet. And now you chain two. One, two, another double crochet in that chain space, and another double crochet in that chain space. So you have four separated by chain two. And what that chain two does is gives us space to do this fan of flowers on the next round. Chain one, two, chain two, and two double crochet. Oops. Chain one. Now we can catch this working yarn, or sorry, the tail end. Double crochet, double crochet, pull out more yarn. Take a little tea break. And I'm going to speed up a little bit. You're always looking for those chain spaces. So here we're at that chain three in the first double crochet. And you can tell where, um, if I hadn't gone into that top of the chain, these would look more separated and might have tricked me into thinking um, it was a chain space to be crocheted into. Sorry. And this is our, fi uh, yeah, our final chain, uh, double crochet here. And then what we do is we chain one, right? And then here we 
you only have the three. So what we do is crochet in that spot. So now we have four. Find the chain that you want to crochet into. Catch it. And instead of tying off, we're going to do one more round. You can see that this is where the hexagon really takes shape because of these corners. Now what we're going to do, we're going to draw out a lot more pink yarn. Because now we are going to do the fans and these are seven double crochet in each of those chain spaces with a slip stitch in the middle, which is tucked behind that purple, which we'll do in a minute. I'm going to do this bit kind of fast because it takes a long time. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then this is just the chain one space, so we slip stitch here. And then we do seven double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Slip stitch seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Halfway around. Uh, looks like we have two more. So one, two, three, four, five, six. seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Slip stitch. Last round. One, two, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, slip stitch, last slip stitch. And then we find the top of this one, and this one I do like to uh, go into the third chain from the hook so that my 
I don't get confused in the next round. And so because we are done with the pink, we are going to tie off and snip off. One thing that I forgot to do is work this tail end in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Basically, I have a yarn needle. Put that through, and then I just thread it through the back. Like so. And I will just snippet right here. So we're almost done. We just have the purple and the white to do. And the white in particular will really move it from this flower shape into a hexagon shape. I will show you how. So first though, we are going to pull out a good bit, but not a ton, of our fourth color, whatever your fourth color is. Mine is this orchid purple color. Uh, and like I like to do, make a slip knot. So as you can see here, the purple kind of goes up and over and then it drops down through here to really emphasize that petal shape that this is the edge of the petal because right now there's not any division so it's all single crochet pretty standard single crochet well it's all single crochet but instead of going into the tops of the stitches in order to create this kind of blanket look, this exaggerated blanket stitch look, we're going to go into the chain spaces between the stitches through here, not in the top of the stitches. And then for the petals, we also won't go into the top of the stitch. We'll go into this open chain space down here and that will help pull the purple yarn down and around. So with that in mind, um, and this is just personal preference, but this is what I've figured out for making a bunch of these. Um, I like to start my yarn in one of those kind of deep spots because it's a little bit more forgiving in terms of how your yarn kind of like comes out looking in the end. Um, sometimes tie-ons can get a little bit messy. So I'm going to try to trap this yarn. And we're going to do seven stitches around. So for me, um, again, I'm sure people have different places of starting, but I, I just, I don't know if this is the official way to start it, but I um, do this stitch. Then I start with the first stitch there, again, working into the chain space and catching and working my yarn along as I go. And here it's pretty important to catch any numbering mistakes that you might have made. So if I had done six stitches in the fan, I really need seven here. So um, in one of the others, I had made that mistake and I did two single crochet in one space to kind of make up for that difference. Um, because we really do need to have the right number at the end. So I always like to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, here we'll go down through the big opening, make that single crochet. Now you can tell that this petal is really well defined compared to the others. The colors are coming out a little bit washed out on this camera, but um, they're pretty vivid. IRL. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Right, yeah. Allow a bit more in your arm. And again, oh wait, no, I have my single crochet here. So again, go down, pull up, and then start again. I'm trying to bring it closer, but it's really just shoving in your face. I know some people don't like oversteeping their tea, but it's mint tea, and it's never too minty for me. Alright, so one big single crochet right there. And again, one, two, three. I'm going to trap this yarn by holding it along the top and going one. Oops. It's always tricky with that little end. I'm trying to catch the end of the, of the tail yarn. Two, three. Luckily, it holds it down for you. Four, five, six, seven, and the final petal. One, two, three, four, five. And then you find the top of that stitch, catch it, tie off, trim, all right, last round. So for me, this is the white. Again, I make my slip knot. So what we're going to do here is we're really going to make this hexagon shape. And the way we do this is at the top of the stitch, we uh, do what's called a double crochet increase, which means we um, put two stitches into one, and in particular here, we put two double crochets separated by a chain so it can make that corner. And then here in the dip where um, the petals come together and dip down, we skip the top of that long single crochet so that the stitches can kind of just keep going across. And then as you can tell, these are all double crochet but they just tend to stretch in the middle a little bit more than they do at the corners. So it kind of evens out into this hexagon shape here. So that's what we're going to do. So um, just like before with um, starting here because I think it looks nicer, I also start um, in the middle of one of these 
gaps because um, it's easy to stitch into and also because, um, I don't know, I just find it easier to start it there. So what you want to do is find that long stitch and start your yarn and the stitch immediately to the left of that long single crochet. So again, I tie it on the way that I prefer. And again, we're going to chain three because that fakes out being a double crochet. Then we're going to do three more. One, two, three, four. Now we're at the top of the petal. So we chain one and double crochet back into that same stitch. Two, three, yeah, three, four. All right, yeah. Sometimes I get these two stitches confused. So now we're at the valley of the flower. So we're not going to chain or anything, we're just going to skip right over it as if it's not there. And we're going to chain, or we're going to work into the very next stitch. So again, we're just immediately to the left of that double crochet. Or sorry, that single crochet. We're going to do another four. So one, two, three, four. Can try to catch that kind of wily end. We're at the top again, so we're going to chain one and we're going to work our way back down. One, two, three. And this is where I, this is where I ended on the last round of purple, so it's a little bit funky looking, but as long as you can count and stitch into that next fourth stitch, you're good. So that's why I said on the last round it's kind of important to have the right number because you do four up and four down, so you need seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, right? <laughs> Sorry. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, skip over this long crochet and immediately to the left, work a double crochet. Two, three, four, chain one, one, two, Four. And if you do get up here to this round and you find yourself with only six um, in one of these kind of further down here, I would just do um, a double crochet increase and kind of put slip an extra um, sink, uh, slip an extra double crochet in there. At the end of the day, it's not too big of a deal, I've learned. It's kind of correct as you go and don't worry about tearing out a bunch of work unless you've really just completely thrown off a pattern. But for something this small, you can kind of just sneak extra stitches in here and there. Three, or sorry, that's four, chain one, go down again, two, three, what do I do here? Oh, okay. <laughs> So I only did three, and as you can tell, my numbering is off because I'm getting down here and I'm confused. So I need to do one more double crochet on the next stitch, then chain one, then double crochet again and work my way down. Two, three, Skip, and then 
and one, two, three, four, chain one, and one, two, And our final petal. <laughs> We're going to skip. And then one, two, three, four. Then we're going to chain one and final, final four. <laughs> one. Oh, it's almost basketball season. Three, four, just as I think I'm getting out of American football season, basketball season starts. So I'm not a big sports person. Um, now to connect, we find the top and here I do work into the top of the third stitch. I find that top of the stitch I wanna work into slit stitch and done so oh again I forgot to work my end in so again put it on the yarn needle and I'm behind. Um, actually, I might work it right here. Kind of a little bit underneath. Just because this all around it's being a little bit wily. Okay. And snip off. So that's it. That is the African flower. Um, you can do 